1 through 16 above. Are you telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Dated White Plains, New York, October the 25th, 1995. Yours in truth, Glendora. A chat with Glendora. To each defendant listed in the caption, to Thomas E. Walsh II, to Judge Barrington D. Parker, and to Magistrate Judge Lisa M. Smith. So, that's all to report this week on Continental Cablevision Incorporated and the defendants whose names you see on the screen. Uh, the first crush was uh, the first crush was to uh, get out the uh, Walsh, Alpucci, Larkin appellant's brief and record on appeal, which took a whole week, 107 hours, and $1,100 to get that into the appellate division. The second big crush, well, the big crush, of course, is getting out this book. That was the first thing after the Judge Parker conference, October 6th. That was a big one. The next one was uh, uh, the one I just mentioned, Wood, uh, Judges Wood and Grassi. And the next one was uh, Continental. The next one was to read the uh, papers that came in from the Federal Judiciary Center. And uh, the next one was to get cable vision ready, it was backlogged 20 days, get the discovery and everything else ready to go to the Judge Bryant courtroom tomorrow morning. And after that's done, oh, and the next one, of course, is Galmer, because that appellant's brief has to be in November 1st, Wednesday. So that will be reported on next. And then after Galman is done, then we have to uh, get ready for this conference with Judge Smith. Bill said to his buddy, have you seen those uh, listings, who's who in America? And his buddy says, yeah. And Bill says, well, I'm listed in who's through in America. Bob's parents were in the iron and steel business. His mother used to iron and his father used to. And Arthur was asked, has your wife become more decisive lately after the course that she took in affirmative action? And Arthur says, yes, yes. She does the wrong thing much more quickly now. The boss says that for 80 years he kept his nose to the grindstone and the secretary says, really? Must have been a beaut when he started. This is uh, Glendora versus Michael Gelman. And uh, it's time to get the appellant's brief in to the appellant term, first department. Ah, oh, no, first district. It's really confusing, all these courts. There is the Supreme Court of the state of New York. And you have the New York County Supreme Court, you have the Westchester County Supreme Court, you have the Nassau County Supreme Court, you have the Suffolk County Supreme Court, and so forth. But, there's the appellate division of the New York State Supreme Court, and there's the appellate term of the New York State Supreme Court. Do you know the difference? Well, the appellate division, first department is like Manhattan, uh, and then the second department is our department, Westchester, Putnam, Nassau, Suffolk, I think the first department is Manhattan, is, is New York. No, it wouldn't be. It would be Manhattan and Brooklyn. No, it wouldn't be that either. Although I do think it is Brooklyn. And Queens, I do believe it. Anyway, the appellate term hears appeals from the little courts, the village courts, the town courts, and the city courts. And the appellate division hears appeals from the county courts, or the Supreme Courts. So this is about Michael Gellman, and you know his story, uh, that he refused to return two videotapes of mine, and I sued him for $120 a value of the tape. The price got up to be $300.
price got up to be three hundred eighty hundred demands for him to after it became obvious that he lost the tape to send us hundred and twenty dollars. He repetitively ignored it. Uh, we brought suit against him uh, in the uh, civil court of the city of New York, small claims part, for uh, it started out to be $120, and then there happened to be two tapes that he didn't return, so it was increased to $390. Uh, the judge made the wrong decision, Judge Sir Lee. audio tapes that unfolded the whole story and the log of, uh, that, that told the whole story. So I don't see how you can make a decision if you don't know the facts. Uh, so, uh, as I say, I sued him for $380, $390, and then I couldn't let the bad decision stand. You had to stand up for what was right, and so I had to appeal it. And this is how crooked the courts are. I told you, the courts are the worst consumer ripoff in America. And so I had to pay $400 for the minutes. And he's already cost me something like $760. No, wait a second. He's cost me something like $580, and he's cost me about 760 uh, hours just because he didn't have the ethics to return my property. All the other people I sent the videotape to did, and Michael Katz, who was the predecessor to Michael Gelman on Live with Regis, uh, he lost the videotape, but he confessed, and uh, he sent the uh, $120. But not Michael Gelman. He doesn't have the ethics or the upbringing to do that. So, our top priority is this. I went through the five volumes of Bad Record on Michael Gelman. I pulled out the papers that were pertinent to writing the brief. And uh, that took several days to go through all that, to pull out the right papers. And here you have the front page. OK, here it is, the New York Supreme Court Appellate Term First Department, that's in Manhattan. Appellant's Brief, Glendora versus Michael Gelman. And this is going to, see the way you do these folks, you have to make a mock-up. See this table can't be filled in until of course you've written the brief. And then the questions involved are simply, should a judge hear the evidence before she makes the decision? And uh, then after that comes the, uh, here it is, statement of facts. And Franklin typed all that today. He typed this, and he typed that. That's page two. I won't read you these because these have all been, it hasn't been read to you as it is, but you've been told the facts and the papers from which this is excerpted extricated and that's as far as it go I've got it up as far as December the 5th 1995 and I spent approximately five hours on it Frank I spent two hours so that's seven hours uh, and so I just write the statement of facts and then the next thing comes the argument and you make all your points for the argument then you can do the questions involved in the tables of fun in the table of content that's Glendora versus Michael Gelman, a person who didn't have the ethics to return one's property. And would go to court and say, that's all right. I didn't do anything wrong. That's all right. I did the right thing. Not returning your property, that's the right thing to do. So, Diane says there's a town in Massachusetts named after her, Marblehead, and Sally is worried that her husband is lost in thought, and her mother says, don't worry, dear. It's in unfamiliar territory. And there's big doings at CBS. We got this yesterday. And there's a special meeting of all of us shareholders. 
at the Museum of Modern Art, the same place we have our annual meetings every year. And this is from Mr. Lawrence Tisch. And we've got to go down there and vote in favor or against the merger with Westinghouse of CBS. That's the end of Westing, I mean, that's the end of CBS. It might be the end of Westinghouse, but it's certainly the end of CBS, and it's certainly the end of Mr. Tisch. Uh, let's see, LT Holding Corporation. Guess what LT stands for? Yeah. Lawrence Tisch. Uh, you are cordially invited to attend a special meeting of shareholders of CBS Incorporated to be held at 10 a.m. on Thursday, November 16, 1995 at the Titus One Theater, the Museum of Modern Art, 11 West 53rd Street, New York, New York. So we certainly will have to go to that. And those of us who vote for this merger are going to get a dollar and 15 cents per share, and then it's really undetermined here what's going to happen to those who do not vote in favor of the merger agreement. That's as far as I've got in reading this. If there's anything else interesting here as I come across it the following week, I will read it to you. Other agreements of the company, Westinghouse and Sub, the merger, background of the merger. You see what's happening is that Larry Smith, I mean Larry Tish, has tried and did succeed for a while to make money with CBS, but this last year has been disastrous for him. And he's dumping us. He's getting rid of us on Westinghouse, so this will probably be the last time that I see Larry Tish conduct a meeting, unless I buy stock in LT Holdings. This, I think, is terrific. I'm just going to read some. There's a lot here to read. I wish you would write for this, and I'll send you a copy. This is something you've got to know. This is from Americans for a Better America Incorporated, 1523 Central Park Avenue, Suite 19A, Yonkers, New York, 10710-914-779-1296. It's a not-for-profit organization whose mission is to improve the government and legal system and to provide assistance to people unable to obtain justice. I wonder what uh, David Letterman thinks of CBS being bought by Westinghouse. Has he said anything on his program? I should have asked David Letterman when I was on his program uh, if his father was a, a mail carrier, a postal carrier, because he's a Letterman, right? Uh, this organization welcomes all who support rule by the people as envisioned in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Our goal is for a more perfect nation with justice for all. The things they say in here are so true. Improving government. In asking 80 politicians the purpose of government, half invented creative answers. The remainder were at a loss to answer at all. Our nation's founders knew the answer to this question. Government is to do for people that which individuals can't do for themselves. Government is not needed otherwise. Our country was founded by people intensely desiring liberty, economic opportunity, and freedom from oppressive and taxing bureaucracies. Immigrants of all nationalities and religions wanted this too. When English rule became oppressive, the colonies revolted and gained independence as states. States soon learned they needed cooperation to achieve what they could not do alone, building roads, for example, as American Indians had realized when forming confederacies. Mutual economic needs required unity, so the states created the United States of America and constituted among themselves the Constitution of the United States of America. Thus, our nation and government were not spontaneous creations, but evolved as people sought to fulfill specific needs. They placed checks and balances in government to prevent it from evolving into what many had escaped from. To, to protect people's mutual and individual rights, they created the Bill of Rights. They even provided for the right to bear arms, not for duck hunting, but to make it possible to revolt and overthrow an oppressive government as they had done before. This showed their concern that even their new government might someday be an oppressive bureaucracy if checks and balances fail. 
Our current government is something it was not intended to be, an entity which is oppressive and taxatious, lacking effective checks and balances, which the people must obey and be subservient to. One of the most notorious examples of its failure is the legal and judicial system. See the next section. Improving the legal system will receive special attention in Americans for a Better America's campaign to improve government. To improve government overall, we must redirect and maintain it on a course that provides all the protections and rights in the Bill of Rights and Constitution. We do not seek to destroy it by force, but to educate the public to demand that it do what we, the people, want. It is designed to be a government by and for the people. It belongs to us, and we must put it back on track as we want it. Improving the legal system. A court should be where anyone can get, receive assistance and have once problems solved. Yet now, legal assistance and justice are least likely available in a courthouse. The legal system has evolved band-aid approach into a cumbersome and unwieldy complexity where ignorance of the laws is an excuse because everyone would have to be experts to understand this. To be continued. What other announcements do I have for you? Here is the uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network news. Uh, and the uh, programs, I think they're wonderful that they can, uh, look at this, I take this, this is just Thursdays. So many programs they cable cast, public access programs they cable cast. On how many channels? One, two, three, four channels. Okay, and this is what they do on Fridays. I think it's wonderful that they can do that. I uh, boycott this newspaper because uh, they wrote in great length about the Alliance decision. Uh, but they didn't write anything about the big decision of uh, Glendora beating Cablevision. These recipes are fantastic. I surely, if it weren't for all these lawbreakers and for what we were just speaking about, the ineptitude of the courts, I would have time to do the necessary shopping to buy these things, to uh, cook these things, and to eat them. I don't have time to eat. Listen to this, cashew cream. One cup of cashews, half a cup of water, a teaspoon, a tablespoon of vanilla, a dash of salt if needed, two teaspoons of honey. No, 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 don't eat honey. That's not fair. The bees work their lives away to gather that. It is not fair. So no honey, use sugar. And two tablespoons of oil. Whiz all the ingredients except oil until smooth. Add oil slowly while still whizzing until thickened. It yields two cups. Analysis per level teaspoon calories 30, sodium 2 milligrams, potassium 12 milligrams, cholesterol zero. How about that? That's a good kind of a milkshake. Milkless milkshake. Now tofu vegetable quiche. A half a pound of tofu, you know that is a soybean product. A half pound, a cup of cashews, a half a cup of water, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, a pinch of garlic, a half a table, a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of olive oil, one green pepper diced, one cup of fresh mushroom sliced, one half cup of canned pimentos chopped, and one small onion dice. Mm -hmm. Easy pie crust. One cup of stirred whole wheat pastry flour, one eighth of a teaspoon of salt, two and a half tablespoons of oil, and water to moisten. Banana freeze. Two medium bananas, very ripe, cut in one inch pieces and frozen. One cup a milk, skim, or soy. Okay, use soy milk. Or riches. A coffee creamer, frozen one. Or the one you get in the dairy case. Only I don't buy riches, it's too expensive. I'd buy Pathmark. And half a teaspoon of vanilla. Place the uh, riches, or whatever, and vanilla in blender and add frozen banana chunks, one or two at a time. Blend to the consistency of soft ice cream. A little more uh, milk may be necessary depending on how firmly frozen the bananas are. Variation, add frozen strawberries or other fruit. Use pineapple juice instead of milk. Hey, that's a good idea. 
Yields two servings, analysis per serving. Calories 150, sodium 30 milligrams, potassium 600 milligrams, cholesterol 0.5 milligrams. If skim milk is used, and of course we won't use milk. Look these fantastic recipes. These are all helpful recipes. What's that say? Can't read that. Oh, natural taste. Naturally tasty. That's a good idea. What was happening last year? Glendora helped Beauregard the dog. Glendora picked up the litter in the field. Uh, the New York Law Journal story came out, the picture, and the New York Times came up and took a photographer. That was when I won the big case against Cablevision in the New York Supreme Court, Judge Silverman. The plaintiff has a statutory right to have a program on TV and it must be returned. The Gannett Antitrust Reply, uh, Notice of Appeal, No Cost. That was back in July of last year. Here's our friends who retired. Ralph Andriola and Frank DeMaze. And I don't know what happened to Francis. The American International College, my uh, alma mater, is uh, the uh, girls' uh, basketball team is playing Pace University girls' basketball team at Pleasantville on November. 21st and I'm going to go up there and boo pace and cheer for the American International College. I'm thinking of taking my, uh, the fact that Cablevision never paid my costs, I think I'm taking that to federal court. Uh, Six American Points is a series that's on at the White Plains Library, the New York State uh, Tenants and Neighborhood Coalition, an organization to fight greedy landlords, is having a ball Sunday, October 29, 1995, 5 to 9 p.m. Uh, and that's in the Grand Ballroom of the Puck Building at 295 Lafayette Street, Manhattan. Go down to Houston and turn left if you're going south. I think that's all of the bulletins. If uh, Chat with Glendora is a public forum, so if you have an announcement to be made, please get in touch with me and we'll talk about it. I'm having a problem with a crooked liar, and that's about 99.5% of the liars uh, call uh, the Americans for Legal Reform uh, at 516. 777-7307, and if you're having a problem with a judge, corrupt judge, and that's about all of the judges I know in the Westchester County Supreme Court, uh, call uh, the Center for Judicial Accountability. It's a White Plains number, 914-421-1200. A few people in Nassau County know of anybody who knows anything about why Cablevision took a chat with Bundora off the TV and thereby broke serious laws. Uh, please call me. We've got to get the information, and we've got to break this wide open and stop cable vision from lying. They won't confess. Oh, here's an announcement I didn't tell you. Access for all. This is about public access. And on uh, November the 4th from 12.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. at the Goddard Riverside Community Center, 593 Columbus Avenue at 88th Street, they're going to have free workshops about communications technologies. Among many items to be discussed is the question, how will the evolution in telecommunications address the public interest? That means what will happen to public access. So that concludes uh, the fights for rights. Remember that people will violate your rights in any way that they can. You have to be vigilant, you have to be brave, you have to be courageous. Fights for rights from October the 19th, 1995, Thursday, to today, October the 25th, 1995, Wednesday. Uh, here are your jokes. Um, Harry says, I'm a self-made man, and his mother-in-law says, it's nice of you uh, to take the blame. 
and, and a business wrote to a person that your account is overdue by 10 months that we've already carried you longer than your mother did. And door-to-door uh, -door salesman, he says, has a sure way of selling a product. He tells the person, here's a product that your neighbors said you couldn't afford. And salesmen have great imaginations, but the trouble is that it always shows up in their expense accounts. A salesman said to Mary, if you buy this freezer, you'll save enough money on food uh, to pay for it. And Mary says, but we're buying a car on the bus fare we save. We're paying for a washing machine on the laundromat fees. Uh, we're paying for a house on the rent we save. We just can't afford to save anything else. And here's your Bible passage. Blessed are they, happy are they, that hear the word of God and keep it. And that's Luke 11:28. And here are some hymns. showed it coming through the drain over there. Well, the second week it was just as bad. And I didn't videotape it. Because there's a lot to do. And now this is the third week and we've been sweeping here for 15 minutes. And the puddles are huge. And there are seven of them. One inch deep. They come again from the uh, north wall over there. There's a serious leak over here. This is the Walch's locker. And it comes right by the pipe there. And it floods from both those directions here toward our locker. It runs over the, uh, the drain is plugged, it runs over the threshold, and it floods this corner over here that Franklin is sweeping down. Come over the threshold yet, this Washing machine, and I called up last week and told them the washing machines was making a leak, were making, were aching a leak because it was dirty, soapy water way over to here. This is another big puddle by this door. And this door goes into the hall. Up the stairs to the front hall into our apartment. A little bit of water, right? Right where it's been Saturday evening, 6.23 p.m. John Porzio, get this fixed been going on for three years, and the complaints have been going on for three years. This is for the New York State DHCR in the White Plains Building Department. $16,000 a month, and we can't get this fixed. 16 units, our rent is $10,045. Multiply 16. You can buy $10,000 a month, $16,000 a month. Fade out.
So you press P, up comes police, and you press P again, and up comes Porzio, and then you dial auto dial. This uh, phone stores 200 numbers. Date is it October 21st, 1990? John Fossio's office. Hello, there's an inch of water in the cellar. Our feet get wet going to our basement okay, bed. Okay, can I have your name, please? Our feet get wet doing the laundry. Hello. 21, can I have your name? 21 Greenwich Avenue. Call is being videotaped. Uh, please, Call is being videotaped. What is your name? My name is Operator Three. I'm only too glad to. Okay, this is Tenant Two A. Tenant. Two A. Now we're sick of this. This is about the fifth. This is about the fifteenth time this has happened, and he's got to fix to that drain. Name. And he's got to fix that drain. Sorry. Don't tell me anything about having to have a name. Excuse Operator me. three. This is tenant two A. Now sorry. get that drain fixed. We're sick of walking around in a wet cellar.
just for the record, this noise from 3C, three girls and a boy, has been going on ever since 4.50 p.m. October 24th, 1995, Tuesday, violating our rights to enjoy in peace and quiet. Lack of good parenting. Grounds for eviction. That uh, landscaper was Vito. Uh, he lives in Silver Lake. I am taking a stand against all of these noisy machines that violate your right to peace and quiet. He had three leaf blowers and he had three lawn mowers. Uh, and he had three people. I want you to know that the place looked very nice when he got through, but within an hour of the time that he was gone, the leaves were all blown back onto the property again. Now, I watched him very, very carefully to make sure that he didn't dump these leaves uh, into the property next door, which is another irresponsible uh, violation of people's rights. So I'm taking a stand against these noisy landscapers. I had bad experiences with them. They, uh, the Muranos and uh, the Forgiones, uh, they are second generation Italian uh, people. Uh, they, my experience with them is that they were totally defiant of the laws of the country that they adopted, uh, that they broke one law after another. Uh, they were extremely selfish and cliquish and socially irresponsible. That was my experience uh, with the people in Silver Lake in Harrison, which is closer to White Plains than it is to Harrison. Uh, but I am taking a stand against these uh, noisy uh, landscapers. I don't think it's right. We have rights, and they just don't pay attention to the laws. As I say, the name of this one was Vito. So those were the uh, calls that came in from Nassau County on uh, Friday night. Uh, they were 1995. Uh, and we'll report to you first on uh, the law breaking of Walsh Alpucci and uh, the bendage by Coza Cousins. McGrath, Karamitzos, and the law breaking of Judge. Who is no longer there? I'm happy to report Paul Carlucci and of uh, Judge Ingracia. Uh, on, uh, it's been great. Uh, the Walches were away uh, up until uh, like Saturday, and it's very nice when they're away. Uh, there's no dirt around and there's no noise. Uh, on Thursday, we had the Judge Bryant conference that I told you about, the great big conference. And uh, there was a party, and I want to show you the judges and the political judges and how these were all connected. There was a party up uh, in the Rockland Bar, Rockland County Bar Association put on a party for Judge Silverman. Is that collusion or isn't it? 
And guess who was at the party? That's what's interesting. Guess who was at the party? Judge Wood and Koza. Michael Koza was there. So does that tell you anything? What has it been telling you all along? Koza says, you make this decision against Glendora, Judge Wood, or you're not going to get that political JHO appointment. Uh, that would be a judicial hearing officer. So there's the proof right there. The party was up in Pearl River. And it was Thursday, uh, Wednesday night, I believe, Wednesday the 23rd. And Judge Wood was right there with all of his lawyer friends, uh, uh, Koza. And uh, that's what I said in my brief to the appellate division, second department. This brief that I read you last week, that we spent $1,100 along with a record on appeal, four volumes. Uh, the record speaks for itself, and which we spent 107 hours doing. Uh, as far as that goes, the return date uh, for the appellate division to rule on whether they would uh, let me be in form of pauperous and uh, have the county clerk send in the record or and uh, waive the fee of $250 for me, I couldn't wait for that. The appellate division takes forever to do every, anything. They ought to take lessons from the federal court. Uh, and so they haven't even made that decision yet. Here it was uh, October 27th, a week later from the return date. No decision on informa pauperis and no decision on uh, enlargement for the time to take the appeal. Well, you can't trust the appellate division, so I didn't wait for them. So I spent all that money, or Franklin spent all that money and that $1,100 to get those things in timely. On October the 20th, we made it by 15 minutes and uh, we paid the $250, and we spent the 107 hours getting the record ready. Now, there was another motion before the Appellate Division, Second Department, and that's to allow me to go inform a pauperous on the uh, terrible decision by uh, Judge Ingracia. And uh, I hope they get a decision out on that in sometime in the next deca decade. Uh, so I think, Let's see, um, where did we pick up? We pick up with uh, Saturday. There was a lot of noise in the cellar and I went down to see what it was and it was Roberta. She was back and she was clanging the water pipes and banging the uh, covers of the washing machines. Uh, the Halloween candy and paper was left by the three C kids at the door and they were up nice and neat in a pile, but of course, the Walches had to come home and kick the candy all over the place. So I put it back in and finally I just threw it away. There were two cigarette butts on the walk outside of building A. So it means what I, when they come back, it means two things, noise and dirt. The cellar was a mess with the rain Saturday night. There's a half an inch puddle by the door from the west entrance. There was a huge, huge puddle from the plugged up drain for the east entrance because the landlord never fixes the drain. This is against the warranty of habitability and as you know we've written to the New York State Division of Housing and Community Renewal about it several times. We've also uh, told the building department of White Plains but they're, they're a record for uh, never getting anything done is already noted. Uh, hi, Katie. Hi, Katie, good cat. Yeah, hi, Katie, good cat. Yes. Oh, what a good kitty. Sit right on the log and then I can't read it. Uh, Eastern Standard Time came on Sunday. I picked up leaves in the cellar and we swept the water in the drain. It takes about 30 minutes for that, two people. Franklin polished up the washers, dusted the laundry table rungs, and cleaned out the lint tray. And it was a day of peace. And Katie is sitting on the record. Hi, Katie. Yes. Uh, October 30th, Monday, was a day of peace. We worked on the Galman brief. Uh, it's ready to drive to Manhattan. Mary Ann is here. Made the place look very nice. Uh, Vito blew leaves all over uh, the property next door, which is certainly uh, a terrible thing to do. 
And instead of picking up the leaves and taking care of them, he just blows them onto the property, somebody else's property. And Francine moved out. That's too bad. I liked Francine. She was in 1D. And the agent uh, rented 1D to, some, to a nurse and a woodworker. Porzio doesn't even show up for the rentals anymore. I think he's afraid of us. I think he's afraid to come on the property. He never shows up anymore, not even for rentals. Uh, the cellar floor is wet all the time from the washers or the set tubs. And let's see. It's Tuesday night, the uh, getting together the record on appeal and the appellant's brief. It was reported on TV. The whole half hour was about it. And uh, also the first few minutes of the brief. That was on Tuesday at TCI at uh, 9 p.m. on Channel 8. And Tuesday we went to uh, Manhattan to hand in the Gelman brief. We had to take it back because we had to make uh, some uh, res uh, revisions according to their specifications. So that had come back. Um, and all day Wednesday, yesterday, we were looking for a court stenographer uh, for Judge Bryant for the deposition I'm going to take of uh, Joseph Asnara, their vice president of uh, Cablevision Long Island. I told John Sulich uh, the story uh, about how long it took, 11 hundred dollars and 107 hours to uh, do the brief against No Good Wood. And uh, Mr. Col uh, Judge Colabella saw that particular show Tuesday night about No Good Wood and he mentioned it and I'll tell you more about that as soon as I make sure that, let's see, no time to work on the new wall lawsuit. Uh, and Halloween was very nice. The children, there were only about 20 children. And uh, kids from 3D, uh, 4B rather, 3C and 2B didn't come. And we have lots of candy left over. And I think that's all that happened on Walsh, Alpucci, and Larkin uh, from October the 26th, Thursday, to today, November the uh, Tooth. I'm trying to get Katie up so you can see her pretty face. Katie, can you look at the people? She's just eaten, and she wants to sleep, and she loves the 600 watt light, and she'll go to sleep with me holding her this way. Daddy, what causes rain? And Daddy says, high pressure areas, cold fronts, warm, moist air, and the first day of your vacation. Donald said the vacations are no problem to him. His boss tells him when he can go, and his wife tells him where they're going. Knock, knock. Who's there? Fortification. Fortification who? Fortification this year, we go to the mountains. A camping party was hopelessly lost in the deep woods of northern Maine. And they wandered around and wandered around. And finally, somebody in the party got up enough courage to say to the guide, I thought you said you were the best guide in Maine. And he said, well, I am. But right now, I think we're in Canada. Breaking to report to you on is the Fund for Modern Courts, Elizabeth Hubbard, Michelle Mayapath and uh, Alan Beck, and their bad lawyer, Edmund Purvis, and the bad judge, uh, Colabella, and his law clerk, Raymond Powers, and his court clerk, T.J. Mellon, Thomas Mellon. And I didn't have time, you can see why, to get out uh, my announcement that they have abandoned the case. Uh, but yesterday, when I was poking around the whole courthouse looking for a court stenographer to do the uh, deposition of Joseph Asnara for Cablevision for Judge Bryant Monday, I was, went to uh, courtroom 1200, and that was Burroughs' courtroom. He no longer has it. He's out, and I'm happy about that. Gordon Burroughs is out as a judge. 
And uh, Judge Colabella has his courtroom, 1200. It's one of the big courtrooms, like as Judge uh, Colabella had before when I first started monitoring him in 1981. So I was out there in the back looking for the court stenographer because I had to find a court stenographer and there was Judge Colabella. He's very handsome, you know. It's too bad he's such a bad judge. He's very handsome and he's very tall and he looks quite impressive in his long black robe. And uh, so he said to me, hello Glendora. Uh, and then he says, I saw your program on TV Tuesday night. And that was a good one for him to see because it was all about no good Judge Wood. And, uh, and it was all about the wall, uh, evil, and the law breaking, and the bad work of the judges and the uh, lawyers. And uh, so he just said nothing, and I sort of waited for him. And after the law, you want to hear today's joke? And he said, yes. He's about the best judge for jokes. He loves jokes. And he's about the best audience. He always receives the jokes well. So I told him about Peter. Uh, if I ever have to have a heart transplant, I want the heart of my boss. It's never been used. He laughed uproariously, and he says, as always, you're good. He thinks I tell jokes well. So then he went and hauled down his court clerk, Thomas Mallon, who is just as tall. I was on my way out the door, but I thought I would stay and see how well Judge Colabella rendered the joke he just heard. And he told it verbatim. He did a good job to uh, T.J. Mallon, who also laughed uproariously. So I left, and now I've got to get down to that, because I only have five lawsuits left, and that's one of them. And if I could get that announcement out that they've abandoned the case, it's over, that case would be over, except I forgot there's going to be an oral argument before the appellate division, second department, to which uh, Elizabeth Hubbard didn't know enough to submit her respondent's brief, nor did Purvis, nor did Alan Beck, nor did Michelle Mayapath, nor did the Fund for Modern Courts. But that would be almost over. So I got to get that done. So that ends uh, Glendora versus Hubbard. Mayapath back in the Fund for Modern Court. Edmund Purvis, Judge Colabella, his law clerk Raymond Powell, Powers, and uh, Thomas Mellon. A terrible travesty for the courts. Folks, I'm going to show you in just a minute uh, the happy books that have come back. This is Sleepy Katie Cat. Uh, I guess I'm going to, I've always talked to you about the happy book and I've never shown it to you. It's all different colored pages. Uh, these happy books have all come back because the addresses aren't right. So pretty soon, no, starting right now, I'm going to require that when you ask for a happy book, you've got to leave your telephone number if you're leaving it on the recorder because the addresses just don't come through right on the telephone recorder. And these costs, every one of these costs, 55 cents. And it takes 15 minutes to send out each one. So we can't do that anymore. So whenever you want a happy book, you'll have to leave your telephone number so that I can call you and verify the address. The New York State Tenants and Neighborhood Association had their 20th anniversary birthday bash on Saturday night. Sort of a Halloween party. So I want to tell you about the New York State Tenants Association. I think you should join because we are fighting, of course, the million dollar landlord lobby. And uh, they are trying to take away our tenants' rights. Their telephone number is 212, that's Manhattan, 
and we have a letter to read to you from TCI and right now we're going to take a break. This letter uh, went to Nona Carey at TCI. Nona Carey Dunn, Administrative Assistant to the General Manager, TCI Cable of Westchester, 609 Center Avenue, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543. Dear Nona Carey, one, I want my complaint in all prior papers on the matter of increasing my cable TV bill to go to Scott Brown, General Manager, to be read by same and to be answered by same. Two, quo warranto. Show Glendora by writ of right, by what right you exercise this increase in my bill. Produce the legal papers for the same. Three, I am not kidding. Four, no, Miles did not ask me if I were interested in becoming involved with a smoker's class action suit. I am, however, before committing, I must know what is involved and calculate if I have the hours to do it justice. Five, here's today's joke. A fellow named Ed says, if I ever have to have a heart transplant, I want the heart of my boss. It's never been used. Yours in truth, Glendora. And there's a copy of her letter to me. The uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Uh, Alexander Quinn and Donna Woody, uh, they say that program providers are required to identify which of their episodes is are original upon su uh, submission. False identification of an episode as original will result in cancellation of the series time slot. Well, 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 that's a quo warranto. Right, Katie? You just show me how they could do that. I just don't think that they can. It is not my problem, original or repeat, because I never repeat programs, even from one cable company to another. So I just don't think they can go around canceling your program on, uh, which is a, it's a good rule, but they just can't go around canceling your program for any reason like that. There are too many laws against that, both federal and state. So that's quite arrogant on their parts. Now, I'm going to tell you some jokes. What is a vacation? That's the time of the year that they close the roads and open the detours. And David said that the resort they went to last summer was so dull, the tide went out. And a vacation is a situation where people get up at 4 a.m. and drive 100 miles looking for a sign that says, home cooking. Now, as far as one door. Michael J. Ritter, Nancy Hawthorne, Jeffrey T. DeLorme, Lee Schleyer, Continental Cablevision Incorporated, Greg Sanders, Douglas Guthrie, Diane Rainey, and Melissa Cooper. As far as that goes for the week from uh, October 26th to today, November 2nd, uh, that great big book you saw there, we're having a conference on November 2nd, day. I certainly am going to make my points on that. Ready? It a few times.
other points to make sure it's point. on everything. Mm. Mm. And now she's chewing the mushroom core. I just soon you chew another cord, okay, but not the microphone cord. Uh, points. Whatever uh, Thomas e. says about, uh, and all of these things are not true, about improper service, about uh, walking in order protection because Glendora calls the defendants, uh, about uh, not having a necessary party, About the clerk's not signing all this trivia stuff, and he has no meritorious defense. Uh, all of those things. Is that going to absolve Continental case? All the defendants whose name on the screen. Is that going to absolve them from breaking state laws, federal? These are uh, notes uh, jotted down and lists to speak to Margaret Smith. And go over the rules. I'm beginning to think that a pro se is more at home with these rules than a lawyer or a judge. Having read these rules eight times or more, and I'm talking about, well, a lot of the rules. I would say federal rules of civil procedure from rule one all the way up to uh, rule 27, all the way up to rule 37. And of course, 41, if you don't have your work done, cases dismissed or a uh, plaintiff gets a default judgment from the defendants. Uh, and all the way up to Rule 55 default and Rule 56 summary judgment. That's the thing, folks. Just to read the law and keep saying the law over and over again because lawyers hate to have you read the law to them because they don't know the law. And Katie is sort of, could you just move down a bit? Just a itty bit? play with it. I have to show you, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. See, Walter, all week, the second, and I like that, to uh, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule 30, Glendora is demanding oral be done by her of Hostetter, Nair, Ritter, Hawthorne, DeLorme, Schleyer, Continental Cable Division Incorporated, Sanders, Guthrie, Rainey, and Cooper. Please take note that pursuant to Rules 26 and 30, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Glendora will conduct an oral examination of defense on audio tape and videotape before a notary public or other officer authorized by law to administer oaths on the following days in November. 1995 at 2 p.m. at 21 Greenridge Avenue, White Plains, New York, 105. With respect to evidence material necessary, assessing of the above caption action, November 20th, defendants Hostetta Nair and Continental Cable Vision Incorporated. November 21st, defendants Ritter and Hawthorne. This is all during the week. November 22nd, defendants Delorme and Schleyer. November 24th, Defendant Sanders and Guthrie. November 25th, Rainey and Cooper. All of the relevant facts and circumstances in connection with the incidents which occurred from the 23rd day of August 1995 to the present will be examined, including negligence, liability, and damage. The said persons to be examined are required to produce the following any dubs they made of Glendora's program, any recordings of conversations made regarding these incidents of issue, any written notes, letters, documents regarding these incidents of issue, all affidavits of service by your firm, and all other relevant data regarding this issue. The 
completed. Please take further notice that pursuant to Rule 2034 of the civil procedure, defendants shall produce for inspection and copying any and all books, papers, or documents in their, in their possession. The matters listed above or respond request to defendants for production of documents. New York, October 28, 1995. Yours in truth, Glendora. Chat with Glendora to all defendants. Tom C. Walsh, second. Judge Barrington D. Parker, Jr. Magistrate Judge Lisa Margaret Smith. Pause. Some jokes. The auctioneer said, sold to the lady with her husband's hand over her mouth. And a tourist in Hawaii asked a native, how do you pronounce it? Hawaii? Hawaii. And the native said, Hawaii. And the tourist said, oh, thank you says, you're welcome. Did you know, folks, that time it snowed in Atlanta, it was grits. The third demand uh, on the Continental Cable Vision uh, Plaintiff's appellant's first request to defendants for production of documents and things. Plaintiff appellant Glendora hereby requests pursuant to federal rules of civil procedure, Rule 34, that defendants produce the documents and things here and after described for inspection and copy for forwarding uh, true copies of each document and thing covered by this request. Glendora, 416 White Plains, New York, 1062, within 30 days after this request. And the instructions are if any document herein was formal possession, custody, or control of the responding party parties and has been lost or destroyed. The responding party parties is our requested submit in lieu of each such document statement, which, see, that's the first thing they claim, that it's been lost or it's been filed. Uh, describes in detail the nature of the document and its contents. Identifies the person who prepared the document and, if applicable, the person to whom the document was sent. Specifies the date of the prepared or transmitted. Specifies the date the document was lost or destroyed, and if destroyed, the conditions of the reasons for such destruction and the person requesting and performing the destruction. If any claim is made that any document requested or constitutes attorney's product and any such document is not to be that in lieu of each such document, a written be submitted, which identifies the person who prepared the document and the person to whom the document was sent, specifies the date in which the document was prepared or transmitted, identifies the subject matter of the document, describes the nature of the document, that is, a telegram or a notice, states briefly why the document is privileged or con constitutes attorney work product. Documents requested. See, that's all very crooked. Attorney should not be allowed to get away with that. But the court, the legislature, they're all attorneys. So what chance do we have? All documents that they would be honorable? Yeah, someday. That's Kara of uh, how a Russian's uh, court stenographer service. And they're going to do the deposition for me on uh, Monday, uh, Monday, November 6th of cable. Request number one, going back to Continental Cable Vision. Request number one, all documents mentioning, depicting, referring to or relating to Pandora. I want those documents. All documents that are in the Westchester system of Continental Cable Vision Incorporated May 1st, 1993, in which any of the defendants are directly involved, connected, or early. Three, financial records, books, budget receipts, and other recording transactions in public access in the above stated center. From May 1st, 1993, to the uh, to cover defendants for any such acts or brought against defendants. The minutes of all meetings 
by the management relating to the limit prohibiting chat with Glendorf every being in the year 1995. Any and all videotapes and audio tapes of Glendorf relating to Glendora from May 1st, 1993 to the present identify the length of the tapes, the format, three quarter inch, eight millimeter VHS set forth in possession the tapes uh, may be presently found address, name, telephone number. All documents concerning any communication between defendants pertaining to Glendora other than the legal uh, served on documents will identify refer or refer the amount of expenditures defendants have made in with the reduction uh, with the reduction of a chat with Glendora from every week every which um, or relate to plaintiff and to any activities of plaintiff, press release, newspaper, article, magazine, or journalistic story, written or electronic, mentioned copies of any public statements made by defendants mentioning Glendora, mentioning defendants taking a program off TV, mentioning Glendora's action against Continental defendants. All defendants I refer to or relate to Glendora by third party all documents that to or relate to Glendora's TV report on or about Continental lawsuit Glendora brought against Continental. Copies of all documents referring to or relating to uh, Glendora Copies of any and all statements and or opinions by any regarding any involved in these three lawsuits by Glendora and Continental. These uh, lawsuits that so should have been taken out. Uh, copies of any and all opinions of any expert person acting for or on behalf of defendants regarding any of the issues involved against Cape Continental defendants. Copies of any statements made by any investigators for defendants. Copies of the franchises of defendants with humanities that are served by Channel 19 South. All documents which refer to or relate to services access all documents which refer to the Boston headquarters of Continental and to the Westchester headquarters about Melissa Cooper afternoons to Friday afternoons all documents other than these Rings. Gary Weiss from the church in the Highlands. Uh, we move on here. At the defendant's Boston. Federal rule.
is that there is for strain or function on these people who uh, causing me and have federal law and other uncles uh, the lawyers what the uncle wrote. said being of sound My wife, but that the United States Army comes close to and, and Cats are so cute. Sorry. 
and keep it. Luke 11.28 Lord, I have hidden that I might not sin against thee. Psalms 119.11 is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Proverbs 30. Thy word is thy truth. J.N. Who's 17. Study to show yourself God. Second Timothy. Then are ye my disciples indeed. Thirty one. Every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. He broke. Not a cute little that was given to me by a woman uh, smoke shop. That I smoked in uh, compliments to Times Square Church, 51st Street and Broadway, New York, New York, 10019. Services, 10 a.m., 3 and 6. Good going. Tuesdays at 7, Thursdays at 7, and Friday at 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. Let's see. Also Three, four. There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. First Timothy two. Four. Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners. Timothy one, fifteen. Jesus saith unto him, me. John fourteen six. Two hundred and ten thousand miles. Time, two hundred and ten thousand miles to Lincoln. And uh, so it just wouldn't start Sunday. It wouldn't start Saturday. And it had a spell of doing the wall and brief in and right on appeal, but it seemed to get over it. It boosted twice Sunday, two church and from. We took it to Rick. Uh, that's a uh, one plane service at the corner of Quaropus and Washington. And our new $33 million courthouse. Short. Dashboard. Under the computer. And uh, Perfectly fixed. So he did a good job charging two hundred dollars. But it's so nice to have the car so They call themselves the watch. But there must be some truth in reincarnation. Did you ever notice the five minutes? Like a rabbit. <laughs> 